what are your indicators that were the most reliable indicators of whether or not the show is going to fly? I have none. I really have none. I don't know when I'm making a hit. I didn't know when the eight. The eight team is probably the biggest hit I've ever had. Out of about, I've had about six or seven hits, what I would call hits, some stronger than others. And the A team is the biggest of all of them. And and when Frank Lupo, my co-creator, and I uh, were writing that script, all we knew was that it was different. We knew we liked it. We knew we enjoyed what we were doing. But we and we knew it was different. And I kept saying to him, and he kept saying to me when we were at the script stage. He, I said, boy, I don't know how your end is coming, but my end is really strange, you know. <laughs> and they're either going to love this show or hate it, you know, because there's not going to be any in between. And in, in fact, that's what happened. I mean, you know, there are people who, you know, stay up, you know, for it and, and, and stay home for it, and there are other people who spit up on it. This falls just inside the category of trick question. What's your favorite show? Okay, I got a trick answer. The one I'm writing. <laughs> uh, I, you know, it's funny. I, I have things about all of them that I that I uh, that I like, um, and, and different things. I mean, when I sit down to write Hardcastle and McCormick, I'm I'm writing a, a, a father son relationship, which is something I've always really loved to write. Uh, that was, you know, the Rockford Files when I created that series when I put his father in it. I had so much fun writing that father son relationship. So I, I really enjoy that that character relation. When I'm doing the the A team, I have a lot of fun with the bizarre quality of the characters, which Hardcastle and McCormick don't have. So as a writer, I get to do different things when I, when I write different shows. You became a writer in spite of the fact that you had a pretty substantial handicap. Well, I mean, I don't know how substantial uh, you know, it, it was. I mean, it, it was for me a, a hard thing because I'm a dyslectic. Mm -hmm. And for those people who don't know what that is, that's, uh, you have a tendency to reverse things, to be a mirror reader, to read slowly. And in high school and, and to a lesser extent in college, that was very troublesome to me because it was very hard for me to do science courses, very hard for me to do math. But writing was always real easy. What I couldn't do was spell because every time I'd see a word, I'd see it a little differently, and, and so nothing ever looked right to me. But the writing was very easy. I mean, I was always writing papers for friends, and then they, they would correct the spelling. I mean, I was always a good writer. But my English grades were always low because people, the, the professors would grade you off for spelling. It was just something I couldn't do and still can't. But at this point, I pay no attention to it, and, and uh, I just try and get the words down on paper, and, and, and they, they generally resemble the word that, that, that's in the dictionary. You know, so. Does that mean when you go back to all these high school reunions, people look at you and say, I can't believe you're doing what you're doing? Well, it's funny. I, I did go back to a high school reunion uh, after I had become quite successful at Universal before I set up my own company here. And, I had, you know, I had Rockford on the air, and I think Beretta and Black Sheep, and I had like three or four shows on. I went to, the, and this English professor who had been flunking me when I was at this high school, he came up to me, kind of circled me for a while, and then he came up to me and he said, he leaned in and he said, uh, you, uh, you really make your living as a writer, don't you? <laughs> and it was just the reading was so great, you know, it was like, whoa, can you believe that? <laughs>